You are tuning in to John Pierre and Mary's fun loving, crazy, and honest podcast. If it don't smell bad, it must be clean. Unequally yoked, where any and every topic, life, marriage, I'll go first because I have something to say. Uh oh. Kids and entrepreneurship are up for discussion. How does Mary, a pastor's daughter, and John, a guy who rarely saw the inside of a church growing up, get together? No, no, no. And stay, stay together. together. We all have roles. What does life look like 10 plus years into marriage? Two kids and trying to run a family business. How do we keep this nest egg from cracking? What you mean? Listen in to Unequally Yoked as we dive in to give a man. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and woman's perspective. Somebody, somebody back me up on this. To all the topics married folks are talking about. Are you ready? Let's do this, boo. Welcome in. Welcome in. We are super excited to be here. This is Unequally Yoked with John and Mary. So I guess since this is our first podcast, the first thing we should do is probably introduce ourselves. Well, he's John and I am Mary and we are Unequally Yoked. Oh. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> you know, after the show, we received so many questions about, you know, John and I and our marriage and how we work together in our business and just you know, how we balance, uh, you know, the whole thing, just the whole work life, you know, balance sort of a thing. And we never really had an answer for it. So we're like, you know what, let's just talk about it and do a podcast and, and, and see what happens. See what happens. Like pretty much how we do everything else around here. We just decide we're going to try to try something out, give it a go, see what happens. And so far it's, we're still here, so it's worked out sometimes. Sometimes it hasn't worked out, but this will just be the next evolution of of what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, we're not uh, marriage counselors. We're not marriage experts. We're just totally here to just talk about our own experience in almost eleven years of marriage, and just and you know, our hope is to help ourselves and help right. others. Uh, I mean, because talking through this will help us too. Um, you know, and, and hope to help others and, and have better relationships and have better friendships, you know, whether they want to be a better colleague or employee or employer, whatever the title is, we just, we just want to help you guys and help us be better, uh, together. And we are going to be candid and sharing our own journey, uh, you know, about our life, um, as, uh, married people as business owners and as parents as friends we just we just want to help we just want to be a help right so like mary's saying the whole point of this podcast is just to kind of touch on life in general marriage being parents uh running a business working together um managing work-life balance just trying to figure out exactly how it is that we can do the things that we've done how we can do them better and then maybe drop hints and tips for you guys that are listening and kind of have the same questions, you know, as you're going through your lives of, of what can I do to make my life better? Yeah. We're going to be answering those questions for ourselves here as well. Absolutely. And, you know, we're going to have some fun things that we're going to throw in. John and I give a, a little Q and A's that we, we don't know the questions uh, that we ask each other, but we're going to have fun with it. And then after that, we give a homework assignment to you guys and to ourselves, you know, because we want to hold ourselves accountable as well. So listen out at the end of the podcast for your homework assignment. Yep. Time to do some homework. Time to do some homework. We're always doing homework. So to start this whole thing off, we'll kind of start off with unequally yoked. What's up with that title? I know we got some comments already about, you know, or do we have different religious beliefs? Um, and it's, it's I don't a, know, John, we have different uh, religious beliefs. I, I'm sure we still have different religious beliefs. I know that when we started off, we definitely had different uh, religious beliefs. And that's kind of where, where the title came from. You know, Mary, you would always be, especially whenever we go out, have fun and have a little bit of a, a, a little bit of alcohol in our systems. A little bit of a lot. <laughs> Quite oftentimes you would come to me and say, John, we are unequally yoked. Yeah. And I'll be like, As yeah. those drunk texts or the drunk calls, right. I would call them after the fact. Right. Because, you know, I grew up in a very, very religious, you know, background and, you know, really learned um, that that kind of stuff is is, is not good. It's and like, me over here, 
I was like, we just having a good time. So you want me to scramble them unequally yoked eggs or how does, how does that wow. work? Are we going to eat them? What, what's happening with that? No, no. And, uh, and, and he could say that. <laughs> and when he would say those kind of things, because John was the first person I've ever, first black person anyway, that I had met that said things like that and, and wasn't struck by lightning. <laughs> um, you know, I thought it was a uh, very, I just, I was, it was scary for me. And I just didn't understand um, how it all worked. And at the end of the day, it just really came down to, you know, is he a good person? You know, and that is what I was always on. Listen, man, you know, everyone can have different beliefs. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what you believe. I, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't care. What's most important to me is, are you, or are you not, in my personal opinion, a good person? And if you are, then we can, we, we can make things happen. If, yeah. If you're not, then I can't mess with you. So Yeah, but there are people out there who are asking themselves, like, can they have different beliefs and still work towards the same goals as far as, you know, whether it's a family and or, or business? You know, do you think that that's something that people can do? I mean, we're doing it. You know, I think I think part of it and I think one of the biggest things is, you know, anytime people get um any, a lot of times people in, in, uh, involve religion and stuff like that into being a part of who they are. A lot of times, at least in my opinion and my observations, a lot of times pride gets in the way of that. And and when people put put their pride in front of their relationship or they put their pride in front of um, working together, then usually things don't go well. And so I think one of the things that we've really been good at is putting our pride aside and saying, hey, how can we how can we work together? How can I work for you? How can you work for me? And, you know, you know, whatever's going to happen in the afterlife is going to happen. This, you know, again, I'm, this is just me talking. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So in the meantime, I'm trying to make it work right here on earth. And, and in the, you know, I, I want to work with you earth. on earth, <laughs> you know, so I want to work with you. You want to work with me. Sometimes we don't work very well together. Right. Sometimes seem like all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, um, so for me, it's just like, yes, the answer to your question is you absolutely can, but there's a lot of things that we had to do. Yeah. A lot of steps that we had to take and things that we're still working on because I, I don't think it'll ever go away. You know, anytime you have two relatively strong minded people, you know, uh, having different visions of the same goal. Uh, a lot of times we get we get caught caught up in quagmired. You like that word? That's a good word, right? What what was the word? <laughs> quagmire. Quagmire. We get, I'm we glad get, I have my computer we, open now we, because we go, now we I get can caught up in the quagmire of. How do you spell that? I think it's Q U A G M I R E. Check for me. Q U A G. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Thanks. quagmire. There we go. Spell check. Go ahead. Um, but a lot of times a when, soft boggy area of land that gives way underfoot exactly so an we're, awkward complex or hazardous situation yes an awkward complex or hazardous situation i think is that we've the, been in all this of is them. the name of the character from family guy how about that glenn quagmire how about that i didn't even know that wow anytime you hear that horn that usually means we just had some sort of light or it's a drinking game. <laughs> or you're right. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> two people, strong minds, have two different visions for the same goal. And that's very key, I think, in this whole thing. We all, we are usually having the same goal, whether it's success, in family, whatever it is. But we just have different versions of how we're going to get there. And it's in that quagmire that we find ourselves um, struggling, right? And so... Uh, that's, that's a big part of it is just trying to put your pride aside, put your ego aside and work for the other person. So, but how, how do you get there? Like what's even, I feel like what a lot of people, even for myself struggle with is just the beginning. Like right. it, I always envision like the Fred Flintstone and, and like how he's trying to, his feet are moving really fast because he's trying to get started. So it's like, how, how do you even get started? You know, when you say, yeah. okay, these are two people, they're completely different. They come from completely different backgrounds. Right. How do you even begin to say, let's get on the same page. Let's have the same goals. Where, where, do, where does that even begin? That's a great question. I think it starts with attractiveness. Am I what? attracted to you? 
<laughs> well, you know, do I want to be with you're you? You're going all the way. You know, you're you're starting all the way over. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, in the end, being it, attracted to someone <laughs> has nothing to do with long term goals. It actually does. Okay. Here, this. Hear me out. Hear me out. See if you can follow me. Whenever you're dating in the beginning, right, you're just trying to impress the other person, right? You're trying to impress the other person because you want to get to know who they are. You want them to get to know the best version of yourself, all those kind of things. And so it's almost with immediacy that you start making compromises in the effort to impress the other person, right? So the and so you stop trying to impress that person after you stop I dating? No. Once you So once you start going down the line, then then... You know, you can only give somebody the cover of your book for so long. Eventually, you got to start opening up the book and start reading the pages, right? So at that time, whenever you're you're past the initial dating phase, you're calling each other girlfriend and boyfriend or whatever it is. Now you're starting God, to- God, that seems so long ago. So it was a long time ago. So you, you start- and now, now you're getting past the, the cover on the book, which is nice and pretty. It's got all the, the nice artwork on it. Now you open up the Script. pages of the book. Yeah. And now you get into who they actually are. And it's in those times whenever you're still waiting between trying to impress the other person at the same time trying to give them who you actually are. That's whenever you start finding out whether or not it's possible to be able to make it with somebody or 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 work with somebody or compromise with somebody. And that's the whole total dating phase that gets you to the point of I actually want to be with this person. Right. So there's a lot of small changes, small sacrifices small give and takes that happen in the dating phase that kind of lead you to the point of, okay, I want to take it to the next step. That's what I think. Boy, you done went all around the world. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, that, that makes zero sense. A few minutes ago, we were just talking about how it's all about, are they a good person? Yeah. Yeah. But you're saying first, before you decide if they're a good person, you have to be attracted to them first. If you're going to be dating somebody, you should be attracted to them. Yes, that's how that works. But attraction is not just physical. I agree. It's It could be all... Anyways, but how does that relate to goals? How does that say... How, where does attraction come in when you say we're different people? Yep. And you decide that you want to be with that person. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You lost me. <laughs> I, you, you, this you is what lost I think. Me. Well, I'm just saying. In the end, we all make sacrifices, and so part of the whole, the whole, part of getting to the point of can I work with this person? It happens in the dating phase. If you decide you want to work with this person, and 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 eventually you won't really know that until you really get deep into a long-term relationship to figure out if you can if you can actually work with them. But there's a lot of things you should do along the way that will help you work better with that person. And one of those things that we did was going to pre-marriage counseling. Huge. Right? Huge. And that's kind of where we kind of started the foundation of what our marriage was going to be, yeah. who we were going to be in that marriage, what our roles were going to be in that marriage, how we were going to talk to each other in that marriage, uh, all the things that are going to and inevitably have been hurting things as we've gone through our marriage and been points of great joy as we've gone through our marriage. Um, going to that pre-marriage counseling was a huge deal because it gave us both an opportunity to, to uh, speak truthfully and authentically to who we were as people individually. But let's back up and let's tell a, a funny story. Uh -oh. So my dad, so those of you who don't know, my dad is a pastor. Burr, 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 burr. He, is that a DJ horn? <laughs> <laughs> if this is a drinking game, I don't want you to drink to pass the field. <laughs> okay, so he was originally our premarital counselor. Shout and, out to all preachers out there. Okay. I don't think they call themselves preachers. Were it pastors? Like, yes. Pastors. Okay, let's get bishops. It. Oh, don't go any further. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and you know, we just realized, I think by the second session, that he may not, even though he married us, he, he did. He, he married us, which was awesome. Which was fantastic, it, man. It's such it was a, I'm, awesome. It really was. I, I, that's, you know, 
uh, seeing you other, walk down the aisle. Yeah, he, him walking you down. He the walked aisle. me down the aisle and switched places with the other pastor that was there waiting. You know, to ask him. You know, who gives this bride away? Then he swapped places, and then he got to marry us. So I thought that was really cool. And and you know, you're supposed to you know go through the premarital counseling with your pastor, the person who's going to marry you, right? However, we learned that his beliefs just did not coincide with ours. I mean, we're new school. Let's talk about it. I mean, we're new school. We didn't want to do the whole man is the head of the household and the. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I think there was just a lot of there's just a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot of things that that um, we could probably talk about our before we got married part of our life for a good three or four podcasts. But Mary was going through a lot of internal struggle with the way that she had grown up and dating me. And because I didn't come from a church. And so one of the things that I have never been, um, you know, big on is, is, is the mold of sticking to roles, scripts that were laid out a long, long time ago, because I think things have changed. And, and Mary over time kind of went through that internal struggle. And so when it came for time for premarital, uh, uh premarital counseling, and we picked her dad, he, you know, he is a a very strong believer. He has a very uh, strong set of of um, guidelines by which he 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 operates, operates mm -hmm. within the Bible. And you know, we just found that it really wasn't for us. Um, doesn't mean that we didn't want him to marry us because he did a great job, and I wouldn't want to had it any other way. But you know, just where he was at with you know being a, pretty much a Bible thumper in our in our uh, marriage um, counseling, it just wasn't for us because the the roles and 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 the way that he was presenting the way a marriage should work just it just wasn't vibing. Right. I mean, we we wanted to create our own rules, and we wanted to figure out for ourselves, you know, what would work for us and uh, what wouldn't work for us. Um, however, he did recommend someone who was still in their church. <laughs> we ended up still going to the church anyways, right. yeah. which was, which was amazing. And it was an amazing experience yeah. and it really, um, you know, laid the foundation for, you know, what would, you know, later be things that we would take, not just into our relationship, even into now, you know, which we didn't know at that time into our business. Um, and one of the things that we really, really learned, uh, I, re I remember like the first day they asked, the, they told us, they was like, when you guys, um, I think he said, close your eyes and think about why, why it is that you married this person. Because there were other, there were actual married people right. there too. Right. And they were like, just remember that. Like, what do you, th what, what do you remember were the reasons why you chose to marry this person. And then for me, it was, why are you choosing to marry, you know, John? And I was all dumb. I was the only one that cried. Everybody else in there, because <laughs> we were the only ones that were engaged. Right. Everybody else in there were married and right. <laughs> looking at each other the way we look at each other now. <laughs> like, um, okay, yeah, you, do you remember? Right. Um, but, you know, I'm all in there, all cute and innocent and unknowing. And, you know, I, I give my reasons why, you know, I'm choosing John or what have you. But it's it really is, um, I would say, in those moments, um, you know, in this past 11 years, almost 11 years, I really do have to close my eyes sometimes and just remember why it oh is. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Why am I here? Oh. What is this dude doing to me? Is that? Is that what you're doing? Oh, Lord. Let me find a purpose. <laughs> 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 I mean, you do. You have to think about that. Even in business, as business owners, you know, I've, in these three years, I can count Hum multiple fingers and toes, you know. That's good. I feel like I'm doing all right there. It's only 20 times or less. Okay. In three years, I don't know. What's that average? <laughs> you need to do the math that's on like, that. That's like eight times a year. That's not bad. Mm, that's like that's once actually, every once every six weeks. Then that's really accurate because yeah. this is definitely up closed my eyes a couple times and asked, 
why did I allow this? <laughs> why are we in business? Like, what are we doing? What right. are we working towards? And, you know, I think that that's okay to have those questions. Um, it almost resets you and you're just like, okay, but you know what? Let me snap out of it. This, okay. That's why. Let me, let me get back to that. Or it takes you to like this terrible depressed place as well. Right. It can. I mean, yeah. it definitely can, but you, you will snap out of it. You know, those moments are, you know, for me anyways, are, are temporary moments. And, you know, because we do have children and we do have, you know, such huge responsibilities. Yes. I have those moments where I question, you know, what is we doing? Um, you know, I just get up and I do it. Is that a DJ horn? It was almost, but I decided to hold off on it. Cause I, I don't know. I think I, I need a drink on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I think, what we're saying is it's, it's really important to have, um, you know, just to have, have that, a uh, reset button. It's know? definitely important to have a reset button, but I also think, I think, and you can hear it like, even when Mary's talking, I'm listening to her, right? Like you can hear that, man, we still have, we still go through things all the time. Like that's just, that's just marriage. I, 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 I wait. I have yet to come across a person who's been married for more than 10 years and they don't have the same sort of like internal struggles, right? Like we all have internal struggles around what's happening. Why are we doing this? Is it working? Oh man, this is awesome. I can't believe I wouldn't want to do this any, any other with anybody else. Oh man, what in the world's going on? Like it's it's this constant emotional roller coaster of exactly what is that? What are we making and what are we creating after ten years of marriage? Right? Like what are we actually creating? And I think that's a huge deal. I know a lot of uh, our friends who have been married for uh, a, a significant amount of time struggle with the exact same thing. Like what in the world are we actually doing? What are we doing? What right? are we doing? And that's crazy because you know when Mary has those moments for me, I'm like. What are you talking about, man? We 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 got our own business. We have two beautiful kids. We had a TV. You know, we have a TV show on TV. Like we're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And then Mary's like, "Yeah, but I don't. I don't even care about that, right?" And and and, and at some point, in some ways, I actually understand what she's saying because, you know, all that stuff is great and fine and dandy. But in the end, if you're not actually happy, you're not internally happy with what's going on in your life, then all the cool things you may or may not have going on really don't mean a lot, right? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like um you know, what I just I just always lean on those tools. I lean on um the fact that we went to counseling and we continue to go to counseling, which is a, a huge huge it, it's, it's, it's a huge benefit. It's definitely something that you want to, you know, as investors, you know, to invest in yourself and invest in your relationship. Oh, I like how you said that. Say that one more time. What? Say that again. As investors, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah, but when people people say that all the time, I didn't invent that. You know, people say no, all but the time. You're, you're talking invent. about it. Yeah, but you're talking about a different way of investing. You're talking about like investing in your emotional health and your and your spiritual health and your well being as an individual, right? Absolutely, and yeah. whatever and whatever that is for you, um, you know, investing in yourself, um, and and as an individual to learn about yourself, and even going to mm -hmm. a counselor by yourself, not just with your with your person. Um, you know, but the thing is, you know, we're still learning each other. You know, we have been in constant uh, change and transition throughout our entire marriage. And as a flight attendant, we used to always say to be flexible. And that's what I'm telling you guys is to just be flexible and remain flexible and, you know, and give yourself a break. Um, you know, it's and, and know that it's going to be OK. Uh, we're all going to be okay <laughs> eventually. And or as, as Kobe would say, everything's, everything's going to be great. It is. It'll be great, but we have to make it great. <clears throat> and you start by making it great by, you know, getting those tools and having those tools in your toolbox and learning, um, you know, how to just press that reset button and taking those moments for yourself to just, um, you know, give yourself a break. So on that note, because you said a couple of words that I that I, I think a lot of people are out there like, yeah, yeah, well, give me more about that. Number one, you said you have a set of tools. So I think you should get a little bit more in depth into what what are your tools? What are the tools you're referring to? And then secondly, what is the reset button? What is that? What does that reset actually do? Well, for me, you know, the reset is taking that moment, you know, to just to just close your eyes and to just um 
you know, have uh, just imagine where you want to be or even going back to the beginning and thinking about what it was that you were dreaming about, uh, whether it was, um, you know, taking a vacation. Did you dream of uh, your husband? Did you dream about your wife before they were even in your life? Did you dream about that business before you even had the business? Like just closing your eyes and, and, and taking that deep breath and just saying, I'm going to be okay let me just start from where I am, not starting over, but just starting from where I am right now and just pushing through. I like it. All right. And then the second part of that is your tools. So you got the reset button. What else, what, what else are your go-to tools to when you're in that moment of like, what in the world is happening here? What are those other tools that you go to, to, to try to, you know, um, well, champagne, yourself- Lots of champagne. (laughs) Are you an alcoholic? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I I remember uh, making a vision board. I know this probably is super throwback because now we have like Pinterest and we have all these other things. But I remember actually cutting out newspapers and magazines and making a vision board for myself. And, you know, you can still do those things, Um, you know, instead of just, I mean, I do still have Pinterest. I have a lot of boards on Pinterest, actually. But just, you know, taking the time to, um, you know, write things down and and, and really envision where it is that you want to be, whether that's in your marriage and in your business, you know, taking taking that time to really, you know, see it clearly all the way through. Got it. Would you like to ask me the same question, though, lovely? I don't even know what the question was. Oh, that's how you know that our communication skills are lacking. It's not the communication. <laughs> Am I listening? <laughs> you asked me, uh, what are my tools? Yes. Yeah, so what are your tools? What are my tools? Well, my go-to tool is, you know, one of the things that I'm, 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 it's a really weird, it might even be sick. It may be, there may be some pathological thing to this, but this is really the truth for me. The majority of the time, and by majority, I mean probably in the 98 to 99 percentile of the time that we argue, the next moment that I have when I'm alone, so if it's I'm driving in the car or um, you're, you're gone or whatever it is, the next time that I'm alone, my go-to is Man, despite the fact that I am hella mad at you right now, I actually start thinking about all the positive things that you bring to my life, like all the positive things that you um, that you do for me, the things that uh, I know that I can't um, function without, um, all the reasons that you make me happy. So that usually by the time I get back from that drive or whatever it is, and the next time I see you, I might still be mad, but in my mind, I've already figured out a way that once we get past being mad at one another, I'm going to be ready to go. I'm going to be ready to go and 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 push forward with whatever it is that, that we're going to be doing to get back on the same page because I've had that self-talk, that talking to myself when I'm alone about what are all the good things you actually bring? What are all the things that, despite this moment, um, I know are are good and um, helpful and all that kind of stuff? So that's probably my main tool that I have. That's awesome. Well, that was our Q and A. Oh, those were good. See, they were like surprised. We didn't even know we were going to ask each other that. <clears throat> that was good stuff. I so like then, that. Yeah. So then that brings us straight into our homework. Oh, you know, homework. here's your homework, guys. Are y'all ready? We have some intro music for the homework. I don't know what that is. We can definitely do that. Oh, okay. I don't know. Homework seemed like doomsday to me. We need a little bit more. I don't know. But no, this is good. Homework is good. So you guys' homework today and our homework is to take the time to remember why it is that, you know, you married that person or, or why it is you decided to be in a relationship with the person that you're with or even why you went into business for yourself. Can I add one more to that? Sure. If you're not in a relationship and you're not in business, why is it that you are doing what it is that you are doing, both positive and or negative? Yeah. And and just because sometimes we do forget that why. So it's good to remember and, you know, and to have that reset button, you know, write it down where you can see it 
uh, where your person can see it, where your employees can see it and discuss it if you're open to discussing it and think about how you can get back to that, how you can get back to your why. And, you know, we just don't need to allow, you know, the hustle and bustle of everyday things to to make us forget uh, why it is that we fell in love with that person or why we went into business uh, and just remembering why we were so passionate about both. Cool. So, so yeah, you got the homework. homework. Let's talk about it next week. <clears throat> and next week, you know, episode two will be about roles and the roles that we play in our relationship and in business. Cool. And in the meantime, we got like 15 seconds. Uh, you guys can hit us up on, on the social media uh, for to drop us your homework if you have answers for your homework. And then also, you know what the topic will be for next week. So make sure you uh, give us uh, ideas for that as well. So Mary uh, we, TJP on Instagram. And John pierre TJP on Instagram. All right, y'all. That's our time. See you next week. Bye.